All right, it is that time of year again. It is time to go over what espresso setup I have landed on after another year of reviewing products. As you can see, it is quite different than last year's setup, which was based around the Rocket Apartamento and Niche Zero. Neither of those items are on the table this year, which might not be too surprising for some of you, but let's just go over each of these items, why they are here, and as always, all of the items that are mentioned will be linked down in the description below. All right, let's kind of start with the little things and then work our way up to the larger pieces. Starting off with a tamping mat, absolutely nothing needs to be said about this. It is a very basic tamping mat. If you don't have one, I highly recommend picking it up, but this is the exact same one as last year. Moving on to the tamper, I am using the Normcore V4 tamper. Why? Because it is my favorite style of tamper, one of these auto leveling collar tampers with the calibrated springs inside. I think they mix the best of workflow and consistency, and this one from Normcore is not hideously, hideously expensive. I originally started using the 54 millimeter version for my Breville machines, and because I enjoyed that setup so much, I got the 58 millimeter version for my bigger espresso machines. So that is my tamper of choice. I highly, highly recommend it. Moving on to WDT, this has stayed as the Duomo V8 WDT tool. If you're gonna click that link, be careful. It is shockingly expensive. This was sent to me by the company. If it were my own free will, I would not have spent my money on this. Don't get me wrong, the Duomo works absolutely fantastically, but for the price, you can get something else that functions exactly the same for much, much less. And I'll actually link one of those down in the description below as well if you wanna check that one out. However, I do really like the Duomo. It is incredibly well built. It is incredibly satisfying to use. There are magnets in here. The kind of detent at the top is fantastic. Um, it is a really enjoyable product. If you want to splurge or give a nice gift to somebody, don't hesitate to go with it. It is fantastic. But for your money, you can absolutely do better than this WDT tool. Okay, moving on to puck screens and filter papers. I use this one that was sent to me by Chris. He is another YouTuber and he makes these kind of fun vanity puck screens that have clever little catchphrases on them, as well as this base that I use to hold my puck screen. And then it also holds my filter papers. I did an entire video on puck screens and filter papers and why you might want to use them. If you wanna check that out, I will have it linked up here, but definitely dive a bit more into that if you are interested in those. Moving on to my milk pitcher. This one kind of has a funny story. For a video, I needed a larger volume milk jug. I went to a local coffee shop that I go to quite often to buy one. They didn't have one in a larger size and the guys who run that shop were kind enough to just hand me one from behind the bar for absolute free. So guys at Cavin Coffee, thank you very much. If you are local to Canada or even the Kitchener-Waterloo region, go check out Cavin Coffee. That is where I buy a whole lot of my beans and they make spectacular stuff and not to mention they are just great guys. So a shout out to the guys at Cavin Coffee. Thank you for this awesome, decent milk steaming jug. Moving on to the final kind of smaller item before we get to the big stuff, we have my shot glass of choice. This is the shot glass by Kruv. I think these are just fantastic in their size. They have a nice big open lid. They are dual wall at the bottom and then single wall at the top. So you get the nice insulation on your hands and you get the nice feel of a thin lip on your mouth. So it's kind of the best of both worlds and they are also really good for swirling. There's kind of these little tabs on the inside that help adequately mix and break up your espresso. So if you could design the perfect espresso shot glass, I think this would be it. If you're looking for a nice gift or you want to improve your espresso shot experience, I highly recommend checking out these ones by Kruv. All right, moving on to the bigger items. Now we have the grinder that I am using and I am using the Malconig X54. And this might be a bit of a surprise to you guys. And honestly, it's a bit surprising to me, but this is just the grinder that has ended up being and staying on my counter most often in my espresso setup. I find that it does a really good job of walking the line between traditional espresso shots, kind of heavier body, more chocolatey notes, something that I would like to use for a latte but it can also express those more light notes. It has good clarity, it has good insight, and it works well with lighter, more modern shots of espresso as well. So as an all around grinder, it is the one that I have been keeping on my counter and it's the one that I've been using most. So here it is in the 2022 setup. 
With that being said, it is not without its faults. First of which, it is definitely not a single dosing grinder. I am still single dosing into it, but it takes a whole lot of tapping on the lid and kind of shaking it to get all those extra grounds out. It is not zero retention. So I still use it single dosing, but it's really not a great workflow for that. My other biggest nitpick is this really, really tall hopper. I think it just does not make sense for home use. I see that they are now selling a lower profile version with about half the capacity. However, I would really prefer a single dosing hopper with some bellows, and I think that would really take this grinder to the next level. But currently, to my knowledge, that does not exist. If you know of one, please link it below. I will absolutely pick it up. Another thing that you might notice is that I am using the Niche Zero dosing cup with the Malconig, because if you guys remember in the full Malconig review, it came with this very odd sized dosing cup that does not work at all for dosing into an espresso portafilter. So we're using the iconic Niche cup, it works perfectly. Um, I wish it was propped up a little bit higher because if you leave it just on the base here, it can get a little bit messy. So generally in my workflow, I'm just holding it up to the spouts to make sure that I don't make my counter super, super messy. And finally, moving on to the big boy, we have the Decent DE1. Pretty much from the start of the year when I got this machine, I have not used any other machines religiously, maybe except for the Profitech Pro 400 for a couple months in the middle. This is just a great machine for a whole variety of reasons. Reason number one, I feel that it kind of has this split personality where it is great for experts and it is great for absolute beginners. It can do things with its pressure and flow profiling and temperature profiling that no other machines can do and create incredible shots, or it can have very forgiving profiles that can be forgiving and easy to use in a way that no other espresso machines can do. It really has a dual personality from the espresso standpoint. The other thing, even more so I think than the espresso quality for me, is the workflow of this machine. It is just a great machine to use day to day. It heats up extremely quickly. Having a scale in the drip tray that will stop your shots at the exact yield, even if you've walked away, is amazing. Having incredibly dry steam, having a quick changeover to steam, having the ability to adjust the steam flow rate if you want to teach a beginner latte art or if you just want to steam a whole lot of milk really, really quickly. It does so many things that no other machines do. Yes, I'm kind of just fangirling over this machine, but really in a year of ownership, it has been very, very, very good. And also, like I said, in that full review, they just continue to iterate. They actually just pushed another software update to it that tries to fix some of the sputtering in the water spout. Um, it has a new purging feature, a bunch of different purging modes for when you're done steaming. So the machine that you buy is not the end machine that you have. They keep pushing software updates continuously to these. So. I don't know what's gonna knock off this machine. If you guys have suggestions of what could maybe replace the Decent, let me know, but I'm definitely in no rush to get rid of it. So that has been this year's 2022 Espresso setup. Just like last year, take your guesses as to what will be here in 2023 and what will have changed. And if you have suggestions about things that I should check out, leave them down in the comments as well. Once again, all of these items will be linked down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.